back in my day, we actually had to create water fields for our frontliners to blast to get healed. Nowadays, y'all kids don't understand what it's like to interact. Y'all got your firebrands just healing and doing all the work for you. This is my Staff Weaver build guide. And while it is true that Staff Weaver probably is a lot less interactive, you do a ton of damage as a Staff Weaver. And I use the Unravel utility to go a little bit back to that older playstyle of being able to do combos and get your team some water fields so that they can heal. And as a Staff Weaver, you probably do the most damage out of every world versus world build. So this isn't like a new build. I've just added Unravel to a pretty standardized world v world playstyle, which is the Staff Weaver. So let's just get straight into the build. I go air with Ferocious Winds for the precision into ferocity conversion. You take Raging Storm, which will give you ferocity whenever you have fury. And you'll take Bolt to the Heart, which is just gonna give you more damage to foes below 50% HP. Basically, everything in here is just to give you more damage. There's nothing else. I just take everything that will give me more damage, like a PvE build. And likewise in fire. So I take lesser cleansing fire. That is the exception there because this will just give you a condi cleanse whenever you get three condies on you. But I don't take any conjure weapons and burning precision isn't really amazing because it's only one second of burning and it's on crit and it's on a five second ICD. So yeah, even though you do have Pyromancer's training, it's not going to really give you that much. So the Condi Cleanse here will probably be more useful. Then you have Power Overwhelming. Whenever you have 8 Might or more, you will gain 150 power. And while you're in Fire Attunement, you'll gain 300 power. You don't really have too many ways to self-buff your own Might. But since you're in a squad there will be many situations where you are above that threshold and 300 power is pretty strong. So just more damage, right? And then Persisting Flames, that's going to give you a stacking buff whenever you hit with one of your fire fields. So basically just Lava Font and your Fire slash Earth uh, dual attack, Power Classic Blast, and then Burning Retreat. So those are really your only fire fields, but Every time they hit, you will get a stack, and it stacks to 10 stacks. So pretty much whenever you use your Lava Font, if you're hitting the maximum targets, you'll get the maximum stacks over two ticks. So it's pretty easy to get the maximum stacks, and that'll just give you 10% more damage. So it's just damage modifiers everywhere, and the build just uses your positioning as a way to survive, and just the immense range of the staff on elementalist to basically avoid damage and then you have weaver so what weaver allows you to do as an elementalist is swap attunement every four seconds so all of your attunements go on a four second cooldown and you're allowed to be in two attunements at one time so when you swap attunements your first two skills will be the attunement you swap to and your last two or four and five skills will be the attunement you just swapped out of and then your three skill will be a certain skill that is created for the weaver class based on both of those attunements combining together and it doesn't matter what order you swap them to so if i'm in earth air you'll get pile driver and if i'm in air earth i get pile driver still so that's pretty much how Weaver works. It can be a little bit confusing at first, having to like precognitively think where you're wanting to go and what skills you want to use, but it's very simple because a lot of your skills are just damage. So the traits that I take are Master's Fortitude, which will give you a little bit of vitality. It's not amazing, but it's better than elemental pursuit for sure and superior elements 
it'll give you two seconds of weakness whenever you use a dual attack but the thing is it's single target so if you do like a dual attack and it's an aoe attack it'll only give it to one of those targets and it's a 10 second icd for two seconds so it's really not giving you crit chance how you think it is it's giving you crit chance to one of those targets for one fifth of the uptime and it's generally just not going to be that useful unless your group is giving out a lot of weakness so if you do think that you're getting a lot of weakness from your party then you can go for superior elements but otherwise you're not really getting this and then you will get barrier and swiftness whenever you use a dual attack so any of your three skills while dual attuned and you'll also gain 10 percent damage boost while you have swiftness so just more damage boost there you'll have elemental polyphony which gives you stats based on which attunement you're in but this is kind of irrelevant because you're not really changing attunement based on what stats you want you're doing it based on what skills you want so this is kind of just a nice bonus but you don't really need to think about it and then finally you have elements of rage which will give you precision based on your vitality which is nice because you have a decent amount of vitality on elementalists because you usually want that vitality to get your very low base HP up. And then you'll also gain the elements of rage buff, which will give you another 10% extra damage when you are single attuned. So if I'm dual attuned right now and I'm in air, then I go in air again, I'll be single attuned and get elements of rage. You will never single attune using your actual attunement spells, but you will use it from an unravel. So let's go over the equipment. I take full marauders on my gear and berserker staff with sigil of impact and force. You can take a sigil of cleansing if you feel like you need it, but generally I just like to take as much damage as possible. You're going to get as many modifiers as you can. And I take pack runes. You can take like Scholar or like Infiltration or Eagle. Any one of those like high damaging runes. It really doesn't matter. You're going to be doing tons of damage anyway. And then I have a Berserker backpack, a Marauder amulet, a Marauder ring and a Marauder accessory, and then a Valkyrie accessory and a Valkyrie ring. And basically what I just try to do is get to 65% crit chance because when I have Fury, I will have 85% crit chance. And then there are other things that can give you a little bit more crit chance sometimes. So you don't want to, like for example, if you went into superior elements, you'd be at 100% crit chance there. And if you had like a keep buff, for example, you'd have more crit chance there too. So you don't want to overcap your crit chance when something like that happens. So I just like to go for 65% crit chance. And anything more than that is maybe not worth it. Just get something like Berserker and Marauders and a decent amount of health and you'll be fine. So that's pretty much the gear. I mean, you can get a secondary staff and put a Bloodlust Sigil on that. And then... When you start out, you're like stacking Bloodlust on your staff and then you swap to your other staff and you can get a lot of value with that. But I didn't really get two staves. You can do that if you want. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You just go full damage and then a little bit of vitality. Try not to overcap your crit. And then for the food, I would use the spicy butternut squash soup or the ascended version of that. And yeah, you're just going for power and ferocity there, as much damage as you can. So let's go over the skills. Basically, your staff auto attacks or your one skills will all be ranged projectiles. So in air, it does this like bouncy projectile. In fire, it does a sort of like AOE arcing projectile. In water, it does the exact same thing, but it'll heal nearby allies. And then the earth one is just like a weakness. So they're all pretty much the same. You know what you're going to get generally. Your two skills are all pretty much the same as well. 
So in Earth, you have this ground AOE that has a little bit of a delay. In water, you have a ground AOE that has a little bit of a delay. Both of those will blast, so it's a combo finisher, which is important for later. And then your fire two is not a delayed one, but a long standing ticking or pulsing AOE. And Lava Font is going to be your bread and butter. So this is gonna be your main damage source. You put it down and it just lasts so long and does so much damage if you're constantly hitting it. And then your air two is a little bit different. It's a long range kind of shock that doesn't have any animation to it other than your cast time. So it can be nice for that little instant burst there, but yeah, everything else is sort of like ground targeted AOEs. And that's pretty much what Staff Ellie is like and why it's so good in World vs. World because you just want to hit as many people as possible for as long as possible. Here's where it becomes a little less simple, right? Because you pretty much know every time you swap into an attunement, you can use an auto attack that's a projectile or you can use a ground target or some sort of like AOE nuke. But your three skill and your four and five skills can be a little bit different. So when you're in air and fire, you have plasma blast, which is a very slow moving projectile that will explode if it hits and do a massive amount of damage. This is your hardest hitting single hit ability. And you often want to do this closer to your target because it's harder to lead on where they're going to be going with this slow attack or you can just do it on enemies who are downed and that way they won't move and then when you go into air water you just have monsoon it's not amazing it'll give out regen and swiftness but otherwise not amazing you have water fire which gives out a little bit of a blind in a area effect wherever you you know shoot it it does a decent amount of damage but in general it's not amazing so now you have fire earth gives pyroclastic blast it's basically like another lava font but it has a projectile before it lands so it's like a kind of like a worse lava font in a way but if you already have your lava font down then having pyroclastic blast on top of it can give you a lot of damage so it's really good and then you have Earth Air, which is Pile Driver, which is a projectile that will daze for two seconds and pierce. And all of these skills are doing a lot of damage, but they're very slow abilities. So yeah, you have to be aware of that. And then you have Water Earth, which is another ground AOE, and that'll be pulsing Cripple over time. And it'll also give you stability. Your four skill in water gives out a chill field that's really good. Healing rain is a very large AOE and it creates a water field that will cleanse conditions and give regeneration to allies. And the water field will also be useful for blasting. The earth four and five are unsteady ground, which is a very strong line terrain. So enemies cannot pass through it unless they have stability and that's very useful for cutting off choke points and basically organizing people into your AOEs. And then you have Shockwave, which is a projectile that you have to be facing the way that you shoot it. And it goes on the ground, sort of like a ground projectile. And what that means is if you don't have line of sight on the target, you can, like say I'm over here and I don't have line of sight, it will go up the hill and sort of hit, or go down a hill and hit. So it's kind of like that. And it will give a two second immobilize in an AOE, which is nice for getting people to stand in your AOEs. So you can do like that into a lava font or something of that sort. And then the fire four and five skill are burning retreat which is a evade, which is really good, and it makes you move backwards. Very good for repositioning. And Meteor Shower. This is your big damage skill. If you ever want to do damage in an area, this is what you're going to be doing. And there's a lot of tricks that you can do that I'll show later. And then finally, you have your Air 4 and 5, 
Windborne Speed will give Swiftness and remove Immobilize, Chill, and Cripple from nearby allies. And then Static Field will give you a ground target AoE that creates this ring and enemies that try to pass through the ring will get stunned. So let's go over some skill tricks and rotations. Generally I like to start out in Fire Air. So as I said you do your 2 and your 3 skill usually first and then while waiting for your attunement cooldown you'll generally use your 4 and your 5 skill or your auto attack. So I like to put out Lava Font immediately to get that ticking and then usually because you don't want to swap into air or fire if you're already in air fire I generally like to go into earth so I'll start out with the fire I'll do lava font I'll go into earth I'll immediately use pyroclastic and then my eruption so I've got a bunch of AoEs going down then one thing I like to do is land a really juicy meteor shower deep within the enemy zerg or group so how you do that is you want to go as deep as you can without getting cc'd and then what you'll do is you'll you'll see how far you want to get the meteor shower and then instead of casting meteor shower you will burning retreat and then you will cast meteor shower on as far a location in as you can. So I'll press four and then five, and you'll notice how the meteor shower is all the way over there, but the skill range is actually not that far. And that's because you basically are pre-casting the meteor shower into the end of your burning retreat animation. And why that's good is because you don't wanna be standing close to the enemy Zerg to cast your meteor shower. It's a pretty long cast just sitting there, so it's not safe to be casting a meteor shower there, but you also wanna be getting it as deep as possible. So yeah, you do wanna do that burning retreat trick, and you can also do a lightning flash backwards as well if even that's not safe enough for you. And you can see there's a meteor shower all the way over there, which is very strong ability because it does tons of damage. So after I land my Meteor Shower, Fire Attunement is probably off cooldown, so while I'm doing the Burning Retreat Meteor Shower, I swap into the Fire Attunement while the Meteor Shower is casting so that the, the Attunement cooldown is basically coming off while the Meteor Shower is being casted. And then I can do my Lava Font, and then I can either choose to go into water after I use my lava font and then I can do an ice spike into that or I can go into air or something like that. Once you've pretty much done all of that you can go back into fire and start doing the initial rotation where you do lava font into plasma blast into earth into pyroclastic because all of your dual attacks are going to have a 15 second cooldown so your rotation doesn't really need to be that long-winded. It can be very short. Then for my heal skill I take Ether Renewal because it is the most valuable heal. It is not the best heal in a lot of situations because it can get interrupted but it is just the most valuable heal. And what I mean by that is because it's the lowest cooldown for the amount of healing and cleansing it gives you. It's really like your only Condi Cleanse so it's pretty important to have and I take twist of fate because you don't really need any other kind of stun break twist of fate is the best in slot stun break because when you need the stun break is not very often but when you do need it you need it and a lot of other stuff so the dodge and the stun break at the same time are very useful and then I take lightning flash this is just best in slot on pretty much every Ellie build and then I take Take Root. This is a little bit weird. This is a racial elite skill for Silvari. And basically what it does is it makes you invulnerable and makes you stand still for three seconds. And while it does that, it summons seed turrets. The seed turrets aren't amazing, but it does make you go invulnerable for three seconds. So if you're in a situation where you're gonna die to like, you, you casted like a ton of AOE, and there's like retail ticking on you and stuff like that, 
then you can actually take root and remove all that retail because you're invulnerable. And if you're getting pressured, you can like sit inside your lava font while you're invulnerable and you can counter pressure that way. But yeah, generally I just like it as like kind of like a get out of jail card. And then finally you have unravel. Unravel will remove all of your weaver training and make you go into single attunement, whichever your first attunement is. So if I'm in fire earth, then it'll make me just fire fire. And it will also reduce the cooldown of all of my attunements. So say for example, I want to do like air attunement and then I want to immediately go into water. I can do, for example, I can do that and then I want to unravel and then it immediately lowers the cooldown and then I can swap attunements again. So you can do really big combos in a row using unravel and there are some situations where you do want to be double attuned. So for example, a lot of your healing on the water attunement comes from the double attuned geyser skill, which you never really see. So oftentimes what I'll be doing with my unravel is I'll be doing my damage and stuff like that as, as usual pretty much. And then I immediately start taking pressure. So I have two choices. I can either swap into earth and precast an eruption if I don't have time for that, I can just immediately go into water. But what I do is I will, I'll do eruption, or sorry, I'll swap into earth, and then I'll eruption, and then immediately unravel, and then go into water, use my geyser and my two skill, which is ice spike, and that will create two blasts. So you basically do around like 3,500 healing with that combo. And another way that you can do that is you can do unravel into your geyser ice spike and then go into earth and do what well, you'd be unraveling. So you'd have transmute earth is a blast finisher. So either way you can do that combo, you'll get about 3,500 healing, which can be nice. And the rest of your team can use blast finishers in that to get a lot of sustain. You can also while you're unraveling to water, you can use your healing rain and that'll give you a longer water field that'll heal you a lot more. So yeah, basically when I unravel for defense, I do some sort of combo with the ice spike, geyser, healing rain, and eruption and the transmute earth. And then there's another use for unravel. Say if you're being attacked by a ranger or some sort of like projectile class, you can unravel and then immediately give yourself the earth aura or the magnetic aura, which will basically make you immune to those projectiles unless they have unblockable. Another way I like to use unravel is to get out my DPS rotation faster. So usually I start out with lava font and plasma blast, right? So I'll do lava font, plasma blast, go into earth and then I'll use my other two ground target AOEs and then I'll immediately go back to fire attunement and I want to use my meteor shower but if I go back into fire then I no longer have access to that so what I do is I meteor shower I lava font and then I will unravel and then do the meteor shower trick and then while I'm in my meteor shower my lava font is coming off cooldown and then I can lava font again. So this allows you to do like three lava fonts within your one meteor shower rotation. So it's really good for that. So I'll show that again. So you start in fire air and then you do this. So swap to earth, do both of those. And then you'll go into fire, unravel, two, four, five, and then you've got pretty much your meteor shower going out and then you do your final lava font. So that's kind of like the main unravel DPS rotation that I like to do. But you can do a lot of other stuff if you know a specific skill that you want access to. So say like you really want to get your five skill from air. You can go air and then you can do the air 
um, unravel. And then since that lowers the cooldown of your attunements, you can immediately start casting your static and then go fire and then lava font in the static field. So this is a Zerg fight where I'm going to be showing a little bit of the skill usage in actual scenarios. So pretty much I open up with a lava font always. I put a little bit of chill as well with the water four just to prevent them from pushing on us. I play a little bit aggressively and I use unravel here so that I can use my earth CC skills. And then I'm just spamming out my ground AOEs as usual. I mean, most of the skills that I use are damage dealing skills. And now my meteor shower is going to come off cooldown very soon. So I'm waiting to swap out of fire attunement because I want that all to line up and I am ready to use it now. I have my burning retreat and I actually use burning retreat forwards because we're actually aggressing on the enemy. But I have to be careful because I was standing in a shade there. So I jump off to the side. I use unravel again to do a little bit of a heal combo so that I can stay in the mix. And I use my healing rain there as well with another eruption. So yeah, I'm pretty good on health now. I can go back in and do some damage. And now I back off a little bit because I am not really sure if we're gonna get pushed soon. Yeah, it looks like we're getting pushed. I do a burning retreat backwards into meteor shower this time. And that allows us to really zone them away from pushing us because then they have to walk through the meteor shower. And we get a couple downs here and I get stuck in a uh, sort of like dragon hunter terrain. So I invulm using my Silvari Elite and then I poured out. You can use blink while you are in the Silvari Elite there. So yeah, take root doesn't stop animation if you blink. And now I'm just spamming more AOE. So yeah, just get your positioning right and you'll be able to spam AOEs as long as you really want. And in this situation, I'm going to show you how to position here. So basically, you want to think about your positioning, not in terms of where your team is, but where your enemy is going to go. So right here, I blink through the enemy Zerg instead of letting them chase me along the wall and having to constantly back up as I'm kiting them. I instead know that they're going to push through and I instead push through them so they have to choose between killing a single weaver or pushing my zerg. You always have to remember, the enemy is going to take the path of least resistance or the most valuable. So if you're standing on top of your zerg, they're probably going to attack you along with the zerg. If you're standing off to the side, well then they've got to choose between killing some random ellie or killing your entire zerg. So oftentimes, you do want to, instead of running in a straight direction, you do want to run off to the side, and that's going to help you to free cast a lot better because you're not going to need to be constantly moving if you have really good positioning, but also that you can land these juicy meteor showers because, as you can see, they're very important, and you want to be alive and healthy to be able to do that and not dead. So positioning is very important because this build is not very sustainable or survivable. So that's pretty much how you play Staff Weaver. If you like this kind of content, then like the video and subscribe for more. And of course, join my Discord if you would like to ask me any questions. Also, leave a comment down below. So I'll see you next one.